Two more runaway teens on the horizon. The two who are running from her father, because she won't marry Demetrius. Hermia and Lysander, remember? Well, the rest here, Hermia, if you think it good. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed. Crap on this thankful rest moment. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, one troth. Well, well, well. Boys will be boys. But you remember that old saying, right? Just say no. Let's see if girls knew that in Shakespeare's time. Naked, Lysander, for my sake, my dear life, for the wrath. Do not lie so near. Tell him, girl. <laughs> oh, take the sense, sweet, of my innocence. I mean that my heart into yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Lysander riddles prettily. No much beshrew my manners and my pride. If Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy lie further off. Here is my bed. <laughs> Sleep give thee all his rest. Well, that's settled, smart girl. Now here comes old prankster Puck. Remember, he's looking for an Athenian teenage boy, Demetrius. Hold the phone. Lysander's got Athenian clothes on too. Quick, warn him off. Yell wrong Athenian. Wrong Athenian! Wrong Athenian! Through the force I have gone, but Athenian found I none. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds a bath and he doth wear? Weeds are Shakespeare for clothes. Churl upon thy eyes I throw, all this power this charm doth owe. Hold it! Shout no, no, and then you'll be a rhymer like Shakespeare. Excuse me, Mr. Puck, could you say that last line again, please? Churl upon thy eyes I throw, all this power, this charm doth- Oh! No! No! Ah! <laughs> Hermia, 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 Okay, I'll cover this territory one more time. Whoever gets a blast of flower power in the eyes will fall in love with the next hunk of whatever living thing they see. Stay! Though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius! Stay! I alone will go! <laughs> Fire I will for thy sweet sake. Helena, where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word for that vile name to perish on my sword. <laughs> Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia, Lord, what though? And yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Will not change a raven for a dove. Wherefore was I to this key mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve such scorn? Fare you well. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come lie sander near. And with all my power, address your love and might to honor Helena and to be her knight. <laughs> That was a turnaround, wasn't it? Lysander? What? Removed? Lysander, Lord! Uh oh. Speak if you hear. I swoon almost with fear. No? Then I well perceive that you are not nigh. Either death or you will find immediate life. Okay, let's go to the videotape. All four teenagers are running around the woods, and one of them is enchant enchanted by Puck. The wrong one. And all the fairies, and the king of the forest, and the queen of the forest are all flying around annoying each other. <laughs> Here comes the Tinkers to rehearse their little play. All we all met. Here's a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsals. We will do it in action as we'll do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. What say thou, bully bottom? 
There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? I believe we must leave the killing out and all then. Not a whit. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell him that I, Pyramus, not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver, this will put them out of fear. Well, uh, such a prologue. Oh, the ladies, not be afeard of the lion. I fear, I promise you. There is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he himself must speak through saying, If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there indeed, let him name his name, and tell them plainly, he is snug the joiner. Well, it shall be so. Then there is another thing. We need a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus of Disby, says the story, did talk through the chink of a wall. Some man, or other, must present wall, and let him hold his fingers thus. <coughs> and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Aren't they the cutest? I love these guys. Okay, Tinkers, coffee break is over. Places for rehearsals. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone goes according to his cue. What? A play? I'll be an actor, perhaps, if I see cause. Pyramus, speak. Thisbe, stand for it. Thisbe, the flowers of old, you savor sweet. Odors, odors. Odors, savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Fisby dear. But hark, a voice! Stay thou but you a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Hawk's <laughs> a little devil. He's gonna play a prank on Bob. I bet my bottom dollar on it. Must I speak now? Ah, you must, for fear Miss Ghosty. See a noise, and he's here, and come again. Oh. As true, as true as hearts, <laughs> that yet we never tell <laughs> That cup's got a gag of in it, doesn't he? The head of a jackass. All <laughs> oh, monsters, all oh, strange, we are haunted. Pray, masters, fly, masters, help! <laughs> I'll lead you to about to the round. Sometimes a horse will be sometimes a hound. <laughs> this is priceless. Bottom doesn't know he's an ass. <laughs> Why do they run away? This is bad for you to make me afeard. What do you see? Oh. <laughs> Knavery, this is to make an ass of me. To frighten me. If they could, well, I shall walk up and down here and say that they shall hear that I am not afraid. <coughs> the hues of mock so black of you with arms hard and brown. <laughs> the frost so with his notes so true. The wren with little quill. <laughs> Oh, what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? Oops, remember? Oberon put the juice into Tanya's eyes so she would love the first thing she saw when she woke up. Now here it is, folks, an ass. 